podcast. Here we go. Hello, hello, around the block and around the world. This is where we discuss, debate, and deliberate all things diabetes. My name is Dobie Maxwell, proudly representing type 2, representing type 1, the vivacious, effervescent, and always in the know, Sammy Parker. We'll talk to Sammy in seconds. But first, this episode of the Just My Type podcast is brought to you by the Diabetes app, a free social community app that brings together both type 1 and type 2 diabetics, plus their supporters. Find community, resources, and Sammy and me on the Diabetes app. What up, Sammy? What is up, Dobie? Before we dive in, I would just like to ask everybody to please rate and review us and give us a five-star rating so that we can get the diabetes community involved, engaged, and honestly just amp up this podcast. We're growing like a fungus in a weed in a positive way. Not only is it delightful to work with you, Sammy, but we get the best guests and we have one today. I know. Today I get to introduce Charlotte Drury. Charlotte, say hello. Hi. We're so lucky to have you and thank you for coming on. Charlotte has diabetes and she is a American trampoline gymnast, which is so awesome and so cool. It is awesome. It looks so much fun. <laughs> it is pretty fun. Trampolines are just, I'm sure, you know, it's, it's competitive and you're in there to win. But to me, trampolines as a kid, oh, I would love to have had one. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> so would have I. My parents never let me have a trampoline growing up. They said it was too dangerous. Wait, really? Yeah, for real. Wait, so how did you kind of get into this then? And also, when were you, if you can kind of talk about your diagnosis story, it'd be really helpful too. So I started gymnastics, artistic gymnastics, when I was three years old. So I kept getting stuck in my neighbor's tree. And my mom was like, <laughs> she definitely needs an outlet for her energy in a safer <laughs> way. Yeah. So she enrolled me in a gymnastics class and I just kind of loved it. I loved flipping. I loved jumping. I loved that feeling of flying. And I stayed in that sport until I was 13. And I was training really seriously while I was in artistic gymnastics. We were doing five to eight hours a day. It was my whole life. I was homeschooled. And then I got really burned out of that whole process. So when I was 13, I decided that I was going to quit and have a career change. But in that moment, I was just done with gymnastics. But my mom said that I had too much energy again. And she <laughs> signed me up for a trampoline class. So I started trampoline. And it was just, like you said, really, really, really fun. Oh, I was yeah. like smiling all day. I loved going to practice. Like it's literally trampoline. Like who doesn't love bouncing on a trampoline? <laughs> Correct. Wow. That's a stupid question. Did you get hurt? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I was just saying mom was wrong, but <laughs> yeah, maybe she was but right. Not until like way later in my career. Okay. Here's the thing. If I had a trampoline in my backyard, I totally would have like broken my neck. Mm -hmm. I was way too crazy. She knew this. I would take too many risks. I needed to be in an environment with some guidance and some guidelines and like a coach telling me what's safe and what's not safe. Totally. That makes sense. Now, 25-year-old me understands what my mom was saying. <laughs> Nine-year-old me, on the other hand, was just very, very furious. They're like, I want to go on the treadmill and I'm going to do a flip right now. No, I'm going to do a flip. I'm going to do a double flip. Watch this. I can land on my head. <laughs> yeah. When were you diagnosed then? I was only diagnosed about a year ago. So just a little over a year ago. Oh. Yeah. So I was diagnosed when I was 24. And it came at a time that was about three weeks before Olympic trials. So this was my second Olympic Games that I was training for. Obviously, with the postponement, it was a really weird year of training, yeah. you know, in isolation and the Olympics being all this time after what we thought they were going to be. Mm -hmm. And during that postponed year and that like extra year of training, I just noticed that things started to get really, really, really hard. I couldn't jump as high as I used to jump. I couldn't flip as fast. I couldn't do things that were easy for me to do since I was like 13. So it was really frustrating. I was really beating myself up for that. I had no reason to think that there was something wrong with me physically. So I was really just telling myself I need to work harder. You know, I'm not putting enough hours. In. Yeah, you're not like, oh, I have type 1 diabetes. It's just you think. Oh, absolutely not. No. Yeah. I mean, like, it's so hard to get to that threshold of believing that something's wrong because we constantly, we have this default of that we're going to believe that everything's okay and we just need to work harder. Invincibility. Yeah, <laughs> that we're invincible. Like the last thing that I ever thought was something was chronically wrong with me. No, I totally get that because I grew up doing like this, same, like honestly, it was like five hours a day of dance. So I've like danced in my whole life. Mm -hmm. And so it was the same thing where you're like, even when, I mean, I was younger, I was like 12 when I got diagnosed, but I was like, oh, this isn't going to affect it that much. And then like, it would just be, yeah, when your blood sugars are high and you're like, okay, I'm literally like going too fast or I like don't have the energy or when I would go low, I actually would perform like really, really well. But I was like oh my 30 gosh. or, or not 30, I was like 40 or 50. 
but because like your body's utilizing it so much that you're like, it was like the weirdest thing, but I would get like shaky. So it just definitely impacts performance more than you think. Yeah, it totally does. But like, I couldn't get off the couch. I felt like I couldn't focus. I felt Mm -hmm. slow and lethargic and I wasn't recovering. That was really the big thing. Welcome to my world, Charlotte. (laughs) All all those things you said, that's my world. Slow, lethargic, (laughs) no recovery. Listen, I'm retired now and I feel that way. (laughs) Retired at 26. Oh my gosh, that's unbelievable. If you can narrow it down to one word, I'm very serious about it. What what was the word when you got your diagnosis that crossed your mind? Relief. Relief? Mm -hmm. Really? Mine was shock. Yours was relief. Okay, because you knew what it was? I mean, there was obviously an element of shock and surprise and disbelief. Mm -hmm. But I think the second that settled within a couple minutes, I was like, oh my God, thank God I have an answer. Yes. Oh my God, it wasn't me. It had nothing to do with how hard I was trying or wasn't trying. It had nothing to do with, am I good enough anymore? It had nothing to do with, am I still cut out for this? Or the Olympics are just too hard. Like there was a real tangible physical answer. And I was so relieved by that. Yeah, because I think athletic performance and this psychological aspect of it, when you aren't performing your best, it's so hard. Mm -hmm. And like, it's such a, like I would used to get like anxiety where I'd have like heartburn because I was putting so much pressure on myself to be like, I have to make it into the top 10 for this. I have to, Mm -hmm. I have to, have to. And then it's like, when you finally have like an answer, like, oh, that's why that was so hard. Or like, I didn't know why I'll practice. I was, you know, having a difficult time with this. And then you're like, oh, that was 250. No wonder why. But like, it's the psychological aspect to know like, okay, there's something that's affecting me. It's like, ah, oh, now I know. Mm-hmm. Now I can like address the situation. It's super validating. Yes. Did you do any hospital time? Like Sammy, I felt so bad for her. She was just a child and they basically, you know, she's by herself. That's really tough for some. Now you're an adult, but did you, I, I was in a hospital nine days for my, I had to have surgery. Oh my God. A whole different world. I was in my forties when I was diagnosed. So you guys were a lot younger. So, but even you're, you're an adult, but still, did, did you stay, did you go home with a pamphlet and not know what to do? How, how did that happen when you first got it? Yeah, I mean, it was really crazy, actually. No hospital time, thank goodness. Um, Yeah. So basically, the timeline of it was I had come back from a national team training camp, and it was at that camp, and it was our first camp where we had all gathered back together after the pandemic, kind of early 2021. And Mm -hmm. it was the first time I had anything to compare my training to other than obviously myself and the way that I felt. And I just remember seeing those other girls and being like, oh, my God, they are kicking my ass like I yeah cannot keep up I can't even keep up with the junior elites at this point which is insane and so on that flight home I was like okay something is seriously wrong something's wrong the like penny finally dropped I finally was like okay I gotta go get this checked out so I got into my primary care ordered blood work and like the next day I went and got it done and then she called me that night and was like so everything's fine except for this one thing (laughs) Except for this one giant thing called like diabetes. Yeah. He was like, so do you know what an A1C is? And I was like, Aaron, why would I know what an A1C is? Why? (laughs) So she's like explaining it to me. Like it's your blood sugar. It's this, that, and the other. Here's the normal range. Yours is extremely out of range. You need to come in ASAP. And so I like woke up at five o'clock the next morning, like waiting by my phone for the doctor's office to call me because she said that they'd get me in first thing in the morning. And yeah. they did. They got me in first thing in the morning. I headed down there at like 630 and, and they got me started with some insulin. And yeah, I think I got a pamphlet and like a little like thumbs See up ya. and bye. Like, <laughs> Toodaloo. Yeah. No, it's crazy. Did your coach help you with it? Encourage you? Uh, how did that work out in that situation as an athlete? I am so grateful for the way that he responded to all of this because, you know, We've been training together for like a decade, you know, it's not like it's crazy. The Olympics aren't just kind of some goal that you're trying to hit in a year. Like it's something we've been planning for, for the last four years, you know? Mm -hmm. And yeah, the second that I told him what was going on in the diagnosis, he didn't bring up the Olympics, didn't bring up training, didn't force me back in the gym, was like, you take the time that you need, you figure this out, you let me know how I could support you. None of it had to do with gym. None of it had to do with training. He wasn't supporting me with the agenda of getting me back in the gym and getting me to an Olympics. He was just supporting me because I needed support and he cared about me, cares about me. As a human being. As a human being. Yeah, right. That's really cool because, you know, a lot of times I feel like now in society too, because everything is like everybody wants to be the best at everything. A lot of people end up putting like they would in that situation handle it differently. Yes. So that's really awesome that he was able to not even bring that up remotely. I think the fact that he gave me that space to take a couple of days, I think I took like a week where I was just, I don't even know if I reached out to him. I just, it was 
figure this out, you know, learn as much as you can adapt, adjust. This is a new identity, really. Like my whole foundation was shook. I was scared. Like yeah. you're not scared for your health and your well being, And there's so much to figure out. It's so overwhelming, yeah. especially in those first couple of days, weeks, months, year. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Did you feel like it has affected your relationships at all? It totally has. I think it really actually like deepened a lot of my relationships that were already close mm-hmm. because it really gave people a chance to like show up for me in ways that I never really expected friends or family or relationships to show up before or the way that you just would never imagine, you know? So it definitely deepened a lot of relationships, um, yeah. but it's also, you know, stressful and it puts a lot of strain on people. And when I'm struggling, the people who care about me also struggle. So it's not an easy thing for anybody to to take on. We're going to give a little plug for one of our other episodes with Dating with Diabetes. We have a lot of other episodes. Charlotte, you're more than welcome to listen. But if you're here for the first time, we try to cover these things. And I think the, the word humanity, that comes through. We want to make it, we're all people. We all have our ups and downs and we want to make it less clinical. So mm-hmm. yeah, thanks for sharing that because it, that's the thing. It's not just you, it's everyone in your life. Yeah, it is. It's tough too. Cause I said like when you also are like dating somebody or you meet like a new friend or whatnot, but it's tricky. Cause it's like, you almost like don't want to scare them by being like saying so much like, oh yeah, just mm-hmm. so you know, if this happens, I'm just, you gonna, know, just in case <laughs> like fall over. But then there's that point that you're like, okay, well, sure, I can do that. But also like, if it's somebody I'm dating or in a relationship with or a close friend, like if they really care, they're not like, they need to take it on with me, you know? And it's Mm -hmm. something that needs to be said because regardless, it's going to end up being discussed and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it it is tricky. It's a tough one too with relationships. especially. I think that's like what you said about, you know, they, if they really care and it's not even, a, it's not a test or anything like that, but you know, if they really care, they're going to take it on with you. It's like a benchmark. It's a little benchmark. Um, but it is, I think one of like the most important things and the thing that like makes me feel the most loved for sure is when my community or people that I'm with take it on themselves to educate themselves and figure it out beforehand or figure it out with me instead of just asking me in the moment, like, why are you injecting yourself? Like, what is that? What is that for? And then now the whole conversation is me having to teach them things. And I'm so (laughs) exhausted by doing that. And I don't want to do that anymore. But I understand they just want to know and they just care. And I, they just want to support me. But I'm like, it means so much to me when people do the research. (laughs) Like the internal battle. And you're like, Charlotte, we're going to clue you on something. Sammy came up with a great thing. We share it with our guests that come on and you're pretty new in your diagnosis. Uh, She calls it playing the D card because most of the public does not know anything about diabetes. Mm -hmm. And Sammy, tell Charlotte about the D card so she could pull it out now early in her journey because I know she's going (laughs) to love it. You know, I pulled the D card a lot and I went to public school. So it wasn't like, I mean, we had so many kids in our class and such. So it was just like we had our lockers. And when I got diagnosed, you always had to keep your backpack in your lockers. Mm -hmm. And so I got to keep my backpack because I was like, oh, I have to carry around all my diabetes stuff, even though in like reality, it was just the little pack. (laughs) Um, But I was like, I pulled the D card or like I got free Diet Coke when I had a low blood sugar, even though that doesn't mm-hmm. make sense. Uh, for a diet Coke. <laughs> exactly. See? <laughs> She's like, yeah. Yep. Um, and you I was it. like, I, I was in Hawaii and I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. Like, I really need a diet Coke. My blood sugars are low. And she's like, oh, yes, like here. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh my gosh, ignorance is so blessed. Yep. So I pulled it if you're pulling the diabetes card because we got to deal with it. So then I think it's fair that you get to use it to your advantage. I totally agree. The first time I was like, oh, this is kind of cool is I brought like a ton of snacks into a concert and like drinks. Mm-hmm. And I was like, they checked my bag. They said no outside food or drink. And I said, I'm a diabetic. You better let me have this. And she did not care. She was like, oh, okay, bye. <laughs> See, you're doing it without even knowing it. You're already on the game. <laughs> I'm a pro. No, it's a good one. I did that with a purse. I went to like a football game. It was like a Dallas Cowboys game. And my friend is like, on the cheerleading and she so I walk in like you can't bring this and I was like I'm diabetic and then he was like say no more I said do you want me to die I'm like do you want me to die or do you want me to bring in a bag that's not gonna hurt anybody yeah well, what's your name what's your name who do I sue what is your name yeah seriously go, go ahead just go go ahead I'm like, right. right 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 so my hyperglycemia and or hypos really going to cost you guys a lot. We're going to take a quick break. Our special guest today, Charlotte Drury, Olympic gymnast. She is fantastic and delightful. Sammy, always fantastic and delightful. I am semi-delightful. I'll work on it. You're very delightful. Do not sell yourself. (laughs) Thank you, Charlotte. You're going to be my manager. (laughs) I'm your biggest fan. We're coming right back. This is Just My Type, the Diabetes Podcast. Don't go anywhere. More with Charlotte coming right up. Hey, friends, and I mean that sincerely. Dobie here. I wanted to update you on my new discovery, Nuff's. 
While plant-based snacks are usually Sammy's thing, Nuffs are my new favorite snack, so I'm taking over. Nuffs are a plant-based snack that are gluten-free, grain-free, dairy-free, low-carb, and low-sugar, so I can have them anytime, anywhere. The best part is they come in their own individual packets, which makes them easy to grab and take on the go, even when I'm on the road. There are four great flavors like brownie and coconut pandan, which are all made out of real nutrient-dense ingredients such as almonds and flax seeds and are lightly sweetened with maple syrup, so there are no alternative sweeteners. Grab them today at www.getnuffs.com and use the promo code JUSTMYTYPE20 for 20% off your order. Don't walk, run, because I can't get enough of these. The Diabetes App is an online community platform that was created to help people living with diabetes find support and information in one spot. And on the Diabetes App, you can join groups and connect with other people all over the world who are also living with diabetes. I mean, for me, whenever I have a bad day, I find myself scrolling through the mental wellness group just to reassure myself that I'm not alone. The Diabetes App has a resource section where you can find articles, recipes, tips, and tricks for managing your diabetes. Download the Diabetes App today and connect with us right on the app. We are back. Just my type, the Diabetes Podcast. Dobie Maxwell is my name, representing type 2, Sammy, defining type 1, vivacious and effervescent and always in the know. Thanks. Our guest today, Charlotte Drury. Charlie, how, Charlotte, Charlie, Charlie. Charlie. How is your, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I had an Aunt Charlene. No offense. That's okay. Now, I'm just curious, how is your adaptive process to eating? Are you having problems? Are you getting used to it? It's only been a year for you. I think it actually got a lot easier once I stopped training because I was very type A about everything that I was doing while I was training. So everything had to be perfect. It had to be perfect, which I think is, you can chalk that up to training for the Olympics, but you can also chalk that up to just being a newly diagnosed diabetic. You want things to be perfect. But in the last couple of months, it's really become kind of second nature. I'm not as obsessed about it. Like as long as I stay in like a decent range, it's okay. Like I just remember how tough it was in the beginning, like having to count all the carbs and like individually count things because I couldn't just look at a plate and be like, I know what to dose for that. It's literally happened all the time to me. Mm -hmm. Like, I'll just be like, that bowl's three units. And, yeah. and I was at the friend last night and he was like, is this just like a guess? And I was like, no, it's pretty right. Well, like, yeah, I just know like, oh, this smoothie looks like two units or this bowl looks like three units. Yep. Like, I don't know. Exactly. Now I just look at something. I'm like, yep, there we go. I, I know the answer to that. But like in the beginning, it's not like that at all. It's so stressful. Like, yeah, I just remember I wanted to make pasta or some sort of dish. And I was like trying to measure it like before cooking the pasta and then it was going to get oh all put together. Gosh. And then I was going to try to like, it was a disaster. And then because it was pasta, I still went super high and I had no idea why. And like <laughs> you delayed carb and you're like, why am I 400 now? Yep. <laughs> yep. Are, are you on uh, injections or are you on a pump? Injections. You would, would. That's me too. It's been, wor it's been working fine for me. Like, I love it. Also, I'm just, I feel like I have learned so much so fast in the last year that I'm really excited to not have to learn anything new. Yeah. <laughs> so the pump world is a little intimidating because I know you, you have to learn a lot for it. I know it serves a lot of people so well, but I'm, yeah, I'm okay with my needles for now. <laughs> Same. No, you also have to count the carbs. And that's the thing. Like I said, I just know now, like, mm -hmm. like Dobie, if we're like, we're hanging out and me and Doby, I mean, we can't hang out right now because we're too far away, but let's say we are Doby. At some point we will. Yeah. And we're like hanging out and I'm like, oh, wow. Quinoa bowl. Amazing. And then I'm like, oh, I'm going to just take three units. If I had a pump, like I would have to, that was the issue for me. I was like, I have to enter in every single Yikes. damn car. <laughs> I'd be like 54. Oh, five. because you can't just, I uh, get it. Oh, wow. And then it would yeah. be wrong. Yeah. No, that's where for me, it was like, okay, I'm not like. There are people who like, especially if you're like a packaged person with stuff, then it's killer. Mm -hmm. But I was like not. So I was like, okay, I'm going to need my food scale everywhere I go. And I don't think I want to do that. So I think I'm gonna, just going to tap out. Yeah. Now let me ask you both this. You guys are both athletes. And uh, I think athletes eat a different diet than quote unquote normal people. Charlotte, I don't know if you know this. I'm a professional comedian. I drive eight hours to work. The heaviest thing I lift is a microphone. <laughs> So when I got diabetes, it was it was a shock when I got diagnosed. But looking back on it, well, I'm a lazy slug. But you ladies both work out a lot. Do you think your diets now, Sammy, is plant based? Would you consider or are you plant based? I am not plant based. I have a really kind of like hands off approach to my diet. I usually just eat what my body craves when I crave it. I stop eating when I'm full. If I want to eat pizza, I eat pizza. If I want to eat a salad, I eat a salad. I don't really have anything like specific that I go for. All mm -hmm. I know is that I really like to eat food that makes me feel good. 
So I generally stay away from things that I know don't make me feel so good, whether that's blood sugar wise or just if it's like a really heavy meal. I get that. But yeah, no, there's not really anything specific. Well, that's the difference between us and you guys, because when I dri- I'm driving across Kansas, I've got a bag of Oreos because I have to be at work at eight o'clock at night and it's noon. Mm-hmm. You know, that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but it really isn't. Now, I used to think Sammy was a total whack job for being plant based. <laughs> now, as our shows go on with all the friendly uh, customer service respect that I give Sammy, I learned something every episode. It doesn't repulse me. I would try it. I'd be willing I, to try Charlotte, it. I couldn't eat. I was like insulin resistant, which is like one out of five diabetics. So they literally tried everything like I did. When I was doing competitive dance in high school, it was like 20 plus hours a week. So I was doing like, I would do like low carb and that was the only way to keep my blood sugars down. If I had even a piece of fruit, I'd be like 300 because I was insulin resistant. So I would literally not eat any carbs. And I was like, this sucks. Oh my God. Because what would happen is like with the insulin resistance, the uh, like fat and protein would like bind with the carb. So I either had to be like, one or the other. And I didn't know about the like plant-based low fat, like that that would like prevent delayed spikes or spikes at all if I cut out any like, you know, dairy, meat or anything. Mm -hmm. So when I tried it during COVID, it literally, I was like 26 units for my 24 hour insulin and it cut down to nine. Oh my God. (laughs) So it was like crazy, but now I get, yeah. And now I'm like, honestly, it's kind of bad. Like I like the foods I can eat now more than when I was like, had to eat low carb, literally vegetables and a piece of meat. That was that. And I was like, oh my God. And I'd be dancing like, well, the freedom feels so good. Like, yeah. Free from having to think about what you're eating and worrying and stressing. And, and for whatever reason, if it's insulin resistant, if it's body image issues, if it's, oh yeah, peer pressure, whatever it is, like it's, it feels so good to be free to just eat. Yeah. And that's how I felt with fruit. I was like, exactly. Like it just, Feels good to feel good. Yeah. Like it sounds really simple, but nobody knows that feeling. Feeling good just to feel good. There you go. That's all we have to do. I'm working on it, kids. I really am. Yeah. Dobie found this thing called um, finding the, or what is it? Finding your groove. Finding the groove. That's what it is. Finding the groove. Moderation, figuring it out. But it's, it's not easy to see. And again, I mean this with love. You guys, women, ladies are all in shape in a, in a groove. The majority of diabetics are like me, the lazy Americans who eat poorly, don't exercise, and then wonder what happens. And again, you're very important and inspirational, but I think an Olympic athlete, and we're both athletes, Sammy's a dancer, that's athletic too. Thanks, Toby. <laughs> and I think, you know, you hit a certain age and you just stop it. I think you're selling yourself short. I think you're really hard on yourself. I think okay. that we are all always doing the best we can with what we have. Yes. And if these are the habits that have surrounded us our entire lives, and these are the things that have served us well in our life up until this point, asking ourselves to make massive changes on the drop of a hat, like yeah. with a diagnosis, that's a big ask. It's not easy. And I think being kind to yourself is number one, but two, like we're all just doing the best we can, you know? No, really. That's very true. Well, that's why we're together. Mm-hmm. We want to create a community to, because we all have down days and even, even uh, Charlotte and Sammy who are, you have down days too. So we thank you for being a part of the discussion here. Oh, let me tell you my down days. <laughs> When I'm down, I'm uh, to everybody. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's tough. Yep. I definitely have my moments. Yeah. No, I, I, my family's like, oh, okay. The other day we were at the gym and we were leaving and I was, how, oh, I knew I was high. I didn't have on my glucose monitor and I just knew I was like really high. Like I had the thing where anything they said, I was like, I'm about to blow up. And I was like, I'm really high right now. I don't know what I am. I was like, yeah, please don't talk to me right now in the car. And they were like, okay, sure enough, you know, somehow get on a conversation. I go home 370. And I was like, I knew how I felt without even checking. I was like, I'm about to blow up on you. (laughs) You know, what's the worst though, is when you are really grumpy and you feel like you're going to blow up somebody and then you check your blood sugar and it's normal. And you're not. It's normal. (laughs) Wow. I'm just off my rocker. Yeah. It's me. I'm like pulling the D card. It's diabetes related. No, am I the drama? Yeah, it's the woman in the mirror. Yeah, <laughs> it's just me. Look yeah. at that. I'm so glad you said that because I'll, I'll be like, oh, my number, I don't know, guys. I'm just like really on edge. And then I check and it's like 127 and I'm like, shit. Oh, would you look at that? I'm exactly where I want to be. I'm like, oh. Oh. I was playing the D card and the D card played me. It, it, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, Toby. I was playing the D card and the D card played me. The worst is if they don't know and they're like, is that high? And I'm like, will they remember if I lie and say this is high right now? And the next time when I say it's a good number, they're going to be like... The best part is I'll be like low and they'll be like, oh, can I get you some insulin? Yeah. And I'm like, okay. 
<laughs> sure. You want to kill me? <laughs> I've learned how to fake a seizure. You know, it's, it's just kind of start twitching and they'll, oh, that's they'll give you whatever you want. You, you have to go. I have to go home. I'm, I'm having a diabetic. Okay, get him out of I'm here. I'm the performer. <laughs> yep, that's it. <laughs> Dobie's performing in the end. Yeah, it's called Try the, the Diabetes Good night, dance. everybody. Once again, Sammy, the time goes so fast. We have great guests. We're fun. We're having fun. And it's time to wrap it up again. Time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> Charlotte, you are so fun to have on. I'm serious. I feel like I'm in the same room as you, but I know I'm not. That is so fun. Those are the best. We're three time zones away. Yeah, three time zones. That's it. We have a question of the pod. Charlotte, what is the question? Okay. My question is a selfish question because I have a ton of travel coming up. So my question of the pod is, what is your favorite diabetes travel hack? Oh. Favorite diabetes, diabetes travel, travel hack. hack. What is yours? So I did, I posted this on my story a couple of weeks ago because I was traveling and I had this awful nightmare travel day where I like missed my connection and they put me overnight in Chicago. And I was like, I ended up getting a hotel and it was like three in the morning when I had to leave for my new connection. And I was like, I'm going to forget my insulin in the fridge 1000%. So I took the pen caps off my insulin and I put them in front of the door. So I would see them as soon as I like walked out. Oh, we saw this. And then I remembered to grab my insulin from the fridge because I've definitely forgotten it in hotels before. Wait, that's, I saw this on your story and I was like, I need to do that <laughs> because I've almost left insulin before like 1000%. Oh no, I literally have. And I've had to have the hotel people FedEx me it while I was still on this trip. And I was like, well, I think I might be in Oregon in like three days. So you could send it there. <laughs> yeah. You're like, uh, it was a nightmare. So easy to do though. That's a, that's an excellent one. I don't think I can top that. Sam, do you have one? The only one I have is that there's been so many times that I've been like, oh, okay, well I'll just, when I'm traveling, I'm like, I'll just keep like all my diabetes stuff in this bag, but it's fine. I don't need that by me because I have something with me. But I always now just keep it with my even like small personal belonging because even the amount of times like I've left the house and I like forgot my test strips and we're like already there. And I'm like, oh my God. And then I'm on the flight and I'm like, well, I don't have all my Dexcom and now I have my, I don't have any test strips. And then I'm like, well, I have all my small belong, like my little travel pack already with me. Nice. Yes. So I don't have to get out of the suitcase. So I just keep it with me. Dobie? My quick one is just, uh, I do a lot of traveling too. Sometimes fly, sometimes drive. But in my travel bag, I will try to keep a little snack available because sometimes just a little a little bit of snack will get you through mm -hmm. an hour or two until the plane lands or the car gets to someplace. Mm -hmm. where you can, not as clever and, and brilliant as yours, but just making sure that I have a little snack with me. Effective. 24 Very effective. We love a good snack. We love a good snack. We do love a great snack too. As we land this mothership one more time, special thanks to our producer extraordinaire, Elizabeth in Toronto, Canada. Up. Yes. Also, a special shout out. I'm sorry. Go I was ahead. just going to say, if you could please answer that question, though, what is your favorite diabetes travel hack? And share, rate, review, and subscribe. We would love to have a five star rating so we can get our diabetes community together. But you can find Charlotte on Instagram at Charlotte Drury. Trust me, you'll be entertained. I love, I love <laughs> looking at your Instagram. And you can find Just My Type Pod on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Just My Type Pod underscore. Facebook at Just My Type Pod and the hashtag Just My Type Pod. Okay, sorry, Dobie, I cut you off. Your turn. No, I was just going to say a special shout out. I just did a uh, comedy show in Nagani, Michigan. is the upper peninsula of Michigan. There's a place called Pasquale's Pizza. They have been doing comedy shows for 30 years. And uh, I asked who's diabetic in the audience. We had about 15 people. And they said they were all going to be listening. So I said I'd give them a shout out. Thanks to everybody in the audience. And Samuel, let's put a cherry on the Sunday, kid. Say la vie, baby. This is the Just My Type podcast.